Hi! In the redo of the third week, so right now, we'll look at how we can handle the expression to represent dices. So for example, imagine we'd like to know the result of an expression being 2d20 plus 1d4. This expression is what you might enco encounter in a role-playing game, such as Dungeons and Dragons, for example, where this would mean the, give me the result of a roll of two dice with 20 faces plus the result of one dice with four faces. So in order to make everything work we'll need a class to represent a die, a class to represent dice handle and we'll look at how we might implement it. So let's go over to our system browser. We'll create a die class, that's a subclass of object. We'll give it the instant, an instant variable to be the number of faces and we'll put everything in the dice package. So let's save this, command S, we'll filter out all the other packages, and we'll write an initialize method. So when you write an initialize method, it's good practice to always check for the initializations of the superclasses. So write super initialize. And then we'll set the number of faces to be six. So we'll have a by default uh, dice with six faces. So let's save this. and what we'll do is we'll instantly test this behavior. So go over to your class, we'll write die test to be a subclass of test case. We don't need this anymore and save everything. Okay, so we have our die test, we'll write our test initialization is okay. So what do we need to test? We need to create dice, so d, die new, and we would like to check that the number of faces of die, of d, sorry, is actually equals to 6. So faces is in red because we haven't defined it, but as we saw last week, this is fine, the debugger will handle it, so let's just save it, and then run the test. So faces has not been understood, and that's fine, because we'll just create it right now, create, in the class die under the accessing protocol. Okay, so this is exactly what we want, the default behavior of a getter. So let's press proceed. Our test passed, so we can just click there and now it's refreshed. So our test is, has passed. So right now, what we can write and what we'll need is a way to roll our dice. So Let's go over there and write a method to roll. So what we'll use is faces at random. So basically we'd like to get a result from 1 to the number of faces. So let's look into the playground. If I write 6 at random, double click, come P, you can see that it outputs a result from 1 to 6. So this is exactly the behavior we, li we would like to use for our dice. So this is our role function that we'll save pressing common S. We'll test it right away. So test rolling. And what's good practice for random behavior is to repeat test on the random results. So times repeat is the way to go. This method is applied to a number and this means it will repeat 10 times the thing will give it. And what we'll give to this method is a code block, so basically it's between the brackets. And we'll write self assert, and what we'd like to assert is basically that the roll of the dice is between 1 and 6. So this means it will check for the result of the dice to be between 1 and 6 with the assert, and it will repeat this check 10 times. So let's save it run it, and if you're not confident if the number of times you tested your random behavior, you might increment it up to 100, for example, save it, run it. So everything's running, we have a good start, it's a good time to save our repository. So let's go over to Iceberg, let's go to Add, we'll save a project under Dice, okay, um, double click on the project, so project dice, we'll add package, we'll add our dice package, 
add. It says that we haven't committed changes, so let's commit right away. Initial commit. What did we do? We create dice, initialization, and rolling with tests. Perfect, so press commit. So these are GitHub's properties, so cutecast and your email address. Cool. Okay. So everything's saved now. You can just keep it here. Keep this one as well. And we'll write another test on the associated method. So for example, one thing we'll need if we need die with 20 faces or die with 4 faces is a way to specify the number of faces. So for example, we'll write something called creation is okay. So we'll remove this. I would like to have a method that I can call like this. With faces 20 and I would like to assert that my number of faces is equal to 20. So how do I handle this? You can see it's written in red, but as we saw last week, we'll let the debugger handle it. So press com S, run it. The method with faces has not been understood. So let's press create. We'll define with faces in the die class. So die class under the instance creation protocol. Okay. And this time it doesn't know how to handle it. So we'll write for him. And D, D will be our new dice, and we would like it to have the number we provided as faces, D faces, and just give us D. Count S, we'll proceed. Faces double dash has not been understood. This is because we haven't defined the setter. So let's create it in die. Under the accessing protocol, okay, and this time I recognize it. So faces double dash equal integer. So that's perfect. Let's press proceed. It's red, but if we click back on it, it's green. So that's perfect. So you can see that now we have three tests. We have the base functionalities of our dice running up and ready. So it's a good time to save everything in our repository. So it's there, or oh, you can see it there. We'll just commit and we'll write class method to specify the number of faces with test. Cool. Commit. So right now we have all the base functionalities of our die and we'll see in the next part how we can handle a dice handle actually. So how we can handle multiple dice together.